Chapter 1 Time Travel Paranoia Hey, you! Can you see us? Why won't you answer? I'm asking you a question. Yes, you on the other side of the monitor. What? What? Excuse me? Hmm. <laughs> Your silence only strengthens my hypothesis. <laughs> Ex I suppose that from your perspective, it appears that we are the ones inside the monitor. <laughs> but that's where you're wrong. For it is you who are inside. Your reality is nothing but lies and shadows. Naturally, that includes you too. Oh my god, he's right! True reality is on this side of the screen. Don't believe me? I don't blame you. Few are those who can handle the truth. But no matter. I shall speak in simpler terms, easy enough for even you to understand. This is the Future Gadget Laboratory, located in the Akihabara district of Tokyo. We call it simply, the lab. Our purpose is to shatter the system and plunge the world into chaos. Well, that's noble! Let's see, the system is the means by which the organization maintains its grip on humanity. Its full scope is too vast to comprehend, but suffice it to say that the system gives the organization influence over government, religion, media, culture, and science worldwide. Most people do not even know that their lives are controlled by the system. It is so deeply embedded in the fabric of society that modern civilization would not be able to function without it. Destroying the system, therefore, would plunge the world into chaos. Alright. Sounds reasonable. Really? You shouldn't do bad things, Okarin. Quiet. I'm a mad scientist, remember? Haha. -ha. From the station, head down Shuadori until you reach Suerhiroho Station. Then take a left onto Kuramasebashi Dori. In the alley before the traffic light, you'll find the rundown Uhiyama building. The lab is on the second floor. On the first floor is a store of ill repute called the Braun Tube Workshop. You can't miss it. Braun, Braun, another name for the cathode ray tube CRT. This name is used more commonly in Germany and Japan. It comes from the name of the inventor of the cathode ray tube, Carl Ferdinand Braun. I like your first name. It's nice. You, you should have a C instead of a K, but it's fine. It's fine. You're German. I can't. I can't blame you. I think it deals exclusively in CRT monitors of all things. Can you imagine? Even in the heart of Akihabara's electric town, the demand for CRTs is practically non-existent. But the proprietor of the Braun Tab workshop, Tanuji, is also the owner of the building. That's how he can afford to maintain his ridiculous niche hobby shop even as land value continues to rise. He may seem a rough sort, but he was no match for my charisma. Now the entire second floor is mine for next to nothing! <laughs> I digress. The Future Gadget Laboratory is currently experiencing a severe shortage of manpower. We welcome dedicated scientists from all fields to apply. At present, our researchers are... Okarin! Okarin! You gotta say lab mems, not researchers! Our lab mems, laboratory members, are three. I am the founder of the Future Gadget Lab, lab mem number 001. The insane mad scientist, Huyin Kuma. Kiyuma, it's wise in English isn't like it's said as an I like in like Tokyo Kai Kyoto. I almost did it again. Kiyoma, Kiyoma, Kiyoma. So Hoyan Kiyoma, I believe. Akarin is cuter though. Next, we have our resident cosplayer and only female member, Lab Mem number 002, Shina Mayuri. I'm I'm digging this. This 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 is interesting. The, like, the prologue, I guess, kind of slow, but this, okay, uh, you got me interested, what's gonna go on? An abbreviation of costume play, to dress up in costume which often is fictional character, people who cosplay are often called cosplayers, which can be shortened to layers. What, just layers? Many cosplayers make their own costumes, well, yeah, I, I, pr I pretty much knew all this, you spend enough time on the internet, you kind of learn that. I'm just curious, because... I'll t take this up again, but there's almost no music in the game. I might have to add some music of my own just to make this actually interesting. I'm surprised, though. All right, let's move on. Do -do -do! That's how it's said. Do -do -do! I, I guess that makes more sense. Do -do -do! Call me Mayushi. I like making costumes more than wearing them. And last, we have our resident Super Haka. <laughs> Lab mem number 003, Hashida Itaru. 
I'm still trying to find a good voice for Rintaro. I haven't really decided on the voice yet. Because the deeper the voice, the more it hurts my throat. I noticed that a lot during the first episode, that my throat was starting to hurt, so I gotta find some good voice. A tremendously skilled hacker, or at least someone who claims to be one. The threat, my friends are hackers who can easily find out who you are, often appears during arguments on the internet. People mockingly call the obviously non-existent hacker a hacker. Okay. So, the guy over there in the corner is Hashida Itaru. Stop calling me that, it's super hacker, duh! Stop calling me that, bro! Maybe you should have a voice like- Maybe we should do something like that. We gotta have fun with it. Here at the Future Gadget Laboratory, we devote ourselves to the art of invention. For details, see our lab's homepage. Our top priority, of course, is to develop weapons for the war with the Dark Dominion, but that research has spawned a number of offshoot inventions. In fact, that's all it spawned. Our arsenal of future gadgets is up to 8, but this is just the beginning. I have a total of 108 inventions to create. Like in that tennis manga, right? Oh, oh, like in that tennis manga, right? I get it. No, it's the number of earthly desires in mortals, you... At channel junkie? What? Japan's most popular message board. Covers a wide variety of topics from hacking to cooking to anime to current events. At channel? Yeah, I, I would suppose. And I thought I told you not to interrupt me when I'm talking. Yeah, I wouldn't want to interrupt you talking to yourself. Or... I'm not talking to myself. Can't you see? I'm talking to the person behind the monitor. <laughs> okay, you're talking. I'm here. I'm here. It's funny because he's talking to me and then I'm talking to you. So basically both me and Rintaro are talking to you. So you should feel double special right now. Ah, he just grinned. <laughs> what are you grinning about, damn you? You don't even exist outside that monitor. <laughs> oh my god, they, they, they like to have fun. They like to have fun. Just say, don't look at me. What? On the internet, it is an unwritten rule to say this whenever you see an image of someone or something looking towards the camera. Okay. I don't think that's gonna work. It appears our attempts to communicate have failed. It's sad to see someone so deeply in denial of reality. Maybe they think we're in the game. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it's even occurred to them. But aren't your 2D girlfriends the same way? Oh, you're busted. A female character, yep. That's different. Those girls are my wives. <laughs> All the waifus. Nobody cares about your harem. But Mayushi touched upon a very- oh, I thought she was gonna touch something else. But Mayushi touched upon a very interesting theme, you know? What if we're actually just characters in a game? Any way we can know for sure? Okay, now you're pushing it. No. Oh, come on! Such questions are meaningless. Our time is better spent thinking of ways to destroy the system. Nice Chunibu- Chunibio, bro? Chunibio? Chunibio? Okay. Literally 8th grade symptom <laughs> syndrome, a term referring to a mindset exhibited primarily by teenage males, also used as a derogatory term to refer to older people who still exhibit this mindset. Characterized by an affected altitude of nihilism or cynicism, extreme self-centeredness, delusions of power or superiority, and a consuming fear of being treated as a child... Dots. The person exhibiting these symptoms believes that they are cool. Cool. But most observers find them pathetic. Chunibio, which is often abbreviated as Chuni, also refers to the fictional tropes that teenage males often enjoy, such as ancient conspiracies, superpowers, especially power sealed in a character's eye or arm, Norse mythology, ooh, battles for the fate of the multiverse, ooh, etc. The consummate Chunibio bio case will work such elements into his own personal backstory. Ocarin is a textbook example. Ocarin? So is this is is this page written by Let's see. I guess maybe some characters write this, because he wouldn't write Ocarin about himself. Maybe Mayuri wrote this? Hmm, interesting. I step back from the monitor. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? What? Displayed on the screen is the ugly cute character, Alpaca Man. Oh my god, Alp Alpaca Man. A mammal ready to the camel. Okay, recently alpacas can even be found in America and New Zealand. Unlike camels, alpacas do not have humps, their bodies are covered with fluffy fur. Due to their strangely long necks and charming faces, they have some popularity as an ugly yet cute... ugly cute animal. Yeah, I find alpacas to be adorable. Oh, 
Not maybe the animal, but at least in games, like alpacas can be super cute. This is a game called Alpaca Man 2, where you speak to Alpaca Man via microphone and watch him react. Oh, that's who they talk to. The game exploded in popularity when it was released 10 years ago, but personally I find the only ugly part of ugly cute to be true. I bought it yesterday, 500 yen used, headset included. I turned to Daru with a menacing glare. Shut it, Haka! I'm no Chunibyo patient! I sweep my hair back and flash a devilish grin. <sighs> I am Huyin Kyuma! Well, that's your character's name, right? Oh, Daru, your communication skills are beyond repair. I'll have you know, I go to a ton of offline meets and I'm always the life of the party. Yeah, sure you are. When members of an internet community meet in real life, I could have guessed. This fat, bespectacled guy is my brother in arms and right hand man, Hashida Itaru, nicknamed Daru. He's a hardcore otaku. You can always find him in front of the computer playing games and watching anime. I know what this means, but I'll read it for anybody who don't. A term for people with an obsessive interest for a in a particular topic, hobbyists. Most often refers to fans of anime, manga, and video games, but they're also train otaku, military otaku, electronics otaku, etc. Yep. He has 2D wives on whom he cheats with 3D maids. I don't agree with his preferences, but to him, anything anything's fine as long as it's... Moe. He's a reliable and skilled partner who brings my ideas to fruition. Despite his insistence that software is his forte, he shows remarkable aptitude with hardware as well. Ow! The needle bit my finger! <laughs> Over here, nursing a pricked finger, we have Shina Mayuri, a 16-year-old high school student, if you can believe it. I've known her since we were both small. She's always an otaku. She's also an otaku. Nowhere near Daru's level, though. No, Daru's nearing the creepy level. This ditzy girl is in charge of the lab's official costume division for women, and today she's working on costumes at her usual, usual leisurely pace. This gang seems so spaced out, all of them. <laughs> Why does the future gadget laboratory need costumes for women? It doesn't. The truth is that Mayuri is completely useless. Still, there's no way I would ever kick her out. After all, she was the first one to join the Future Gadget Laboratory. I still remember the day Mayuri first came to the lab. It was spring. She said to me, Mayushi is Ukarin's hostage. I belong here. He. <laughs> Careful with those words, Missy. Well, that certainly was cryptic. But her offer was my salvation. For she was the first to join me on my magnificent quest. She saved me from a solitary life on the run from the organization. I will never forget her kindness. Mayuri doesn't have to be useful. Her being here is enough. So, did Alpaca Man say anything? Nope, nothing. <laughs> the human-faced alpaca inside the monitor was completely unresponsive. So unresponsive you'd think the game was bugged. Whatever, I give up. Never again will I play this boring game. Damn antisocial alpaca! I curse his name and smack the TV. As soon as I do... Hmm? The TV makes a sound like it's shorted and then the screen goes blank. I change the channel. Nothing. Check the power cable. Nothing. Whack it again. Nothing. I guess it's broken. Damn. This crummy TV is unleashed from the brown tube workshop downstairs. It's probably just old. You made Mr. Alpaca angry! Damn, I'll have to go get it repaired later. I turn off the TV and lie down on the couch. I'm fed up with the humidity of Japanese summers. I stare at a conspicuous stain on the ceiling while fanning myself. I close my eyes. And what naturally comes to mind is the impossible scene I saw an hour ago. So that was just one hour later. But I'm guessing in another time. But so one... One hour ahead of this will be... B okay, let's, let's go. They're gone. 
As I left Radio Kaikon, everyone vanished before my eyes. I can't explain it. And it wasn't just the old peep wasn't just the people on the street. The people in the stores gone, and the restaurants gone, even the cars vanished, drivers and all. And it all ha and it all happened in the blink of an eye. Suddenly an empty city spread before me. I could still hear the music from the stores, but those catchy melodies were the only sounds of life remaining. Heat was rising from the asphalt in waves but I felt only a cold chill down my spine. I just stood there, breathless, until... What's wrong? Myuri's voice brought me back to reality. Myuri hadn't disappeared. Whoa, well, good, I'm not alone. We can procreate. Make a whole new... Wait, that doesn't actually work, because we have a baby, we have two babies, but then how does it go on from there? It's just going to be incest, and it's going to be deformed humans. Yeah, that's what happens when you just have two people on Earth. She was right there, looking at me with questioning eyes. Everyone disappeared just now, right? Huh? You saw it too, right? Just now, before our very eyes! Panic took hold as the enormity of what had just happened struck me. Unable to control myself, I grabbed Mayuri by her slender shoulders and shook her. Did you see it, Mayuri? You saw it, right? Hmm? Uh -huh. Mayuri's head flopped back and forth from my shaking. I didn't see anything! You didn't? I stopped shaking her and looked straight into her eyes. She returned my gaze with eyes clear as glass marbles. You saw nothing? Nothing at all? There were people here a second ago, weren't there? There were? Even the store employees are gone. That's impossible by any measure! Of course they are. Her reply didn't make any sense. It was like this when we got here. Oh, I know, you're seeing things, aren't you? I'm sure it's... I'm sure it's because of the heat. Do -do -do. How could you laugh at a time like this? I always thought she was a bit strange, but maybe your brain is actually broken. <laughs> Whoa. I realized that she couldn't help me. With nowhere else to turn, I looked up at the bright blue sky. There wasn't a cloud in sight. Scorching summer sun shone bright through the gaps between Akiba's buildings. Naturally, my eyes drifted to the top floor of Radio Kaikon, where I had been just a moment before. Yup. There it was. An enormous machine, like some kind of satellite, embedded in the roof of the building where not five minutes ago before, five minutes before, I had found Makisa Kurizu's body in a pool of blood. What happened to her? Just before everyone disappeared, I could have sworn I heard an ambulance siren. Makisa Kurizu might still be in that dark, narrow passageway, cold, bloody, and alone. The thought disturbed me, but the question at the forefront of my mind was... What the hell is that satellite doing there? Right before Dr. Nakabashi's presentation, the building shook like a bomb had exploded. The roof door lock had been broken and beyond it someone had placed a satellite-like machine shrouded in smoke and glowing dust. When I first saw it, the satellite was on the rooftop. But that's not what I was seeing now. The satellite had penetrated the top floor of the building, obliterating the room where Dr. Nakabashi's press conference had been held. I'm guessing that could symbolize two different time, like, uh, versions, universes. Like, in one universe, it, it was on the roof, and the other one, it crashed into the building, just to kind of symbolize that it's a different time. So, I don't know what to call it. But, uh, yeah, also, like, try and not, like, tell me, like, tell me, oh, dark to this path to get this and this ending and stuff like that. Like, no sort of spoiler comments, you'll be blocked, it's just... It's obnoxious. Rather, have me go through the game, make the choices that I make, and see what ending I get through my choices. That's more interesting. Once we've gotten that ending, we can go back and follow a guide or whatever to get all the endings, if we feel like it, if we find the game to be fun enough. Okay? Okay. It must have fallen out of orbit without burning up in the atmosphere somehow. I knew it was crazy, but what other explanation could there be? The real question was... When did that happen? Myri, about that satellite. Yep, what a surprise, huh? 
What do you mean? What was the surprise? He made a huge kaplow sound. A huge kaplow? It certainly did make a sound. But I don't think it was kaplow. I'd say it was more like... Did that satellite fall out of the sky? Did it? Do you think any aliens were on board? Dots. Had I lost my mind? What I had seen didn't match at all with what Mayuri was saying. Suddenly nothing seemed real. Had I dreamt it all? Hey, you too! Just then a uniformed policeman ran up to us, his expression stern. What do you think you're doing here? This area is off limits. You have to leave. Oh, we're sorry. First, my good man, let's call you Officer A. I have one question. Officer A? Thousands of people just vanished. You saw it too, didn't you? What are you talking about? Get out of here. I was quickly losing confidence in my own memories. I decided to tell him about Makisa Kurisu and get him to call an ambulance, but before I could... Look, I don't have time for your nonsense. The policeman took me by my upper arm and said... No one got stabbed at Radio Kaikon. What? How could he say that with such certainty? While I was still trying to comprehend the situation, the policeman forcefully led us away. We were escorted to the UPX and released. Is that the police? A major office building in Akihabara. Okay, so he just kind of took us to another place. There were people at UPX, like usual. Actually, there were far more people than usual. The place was packed. Just as Officer A had said, Chiodori had been blockaded by police, so nobody could enter. There was nothing we could do, so we headed back to the lab. And that brings us to the present. Wait, so the reason everything was deserted was because the police had block? No, that no, that doesn't make. What was did they dis? What does that? Ah, so many questions. Oh my god. Let's let's move on. All right. Princess, yeah, I get it. I'm baffled. Did the whole hour since the beginning of Nakabashi's presentation really happen? I check online for any news. The net is buzzing about the mysterious machine that crashed into Radio Kaikon, so that has happened. All of the major stations in Tokyo, even TO T TOTV, TO TV, TO TV, are running special bulletins about it. The television network based in Tokyo, TO TV airs more anime than other commercial television networks, making it a favorite among otaku. When a major news story breaks in Tokyo, most stations interrupt regular programming to deliver a special bulletin. TO TV is the exception, which has given rise to the joke, if TO TV cuts to a special bulletin, the apocalypse is nigh. <laughs> Fortunately, it doesn't look like anyone was hurt, but Chiodori is still closed off. Akihabara's Akihabara station is jammed with reporters and curious onlookers. Nobody has mentioned anything about the disappearance of thousands of people from Akiba's streets, nor about Makisa Kurisu's murder. It's all a mystery. A mystery? I see. So that's it. From the sofa I spring to my feet, a wide grin on my face. Daru and Mayuri turn and stare. This is all an elaborate cover-up by the organization. Their influence has corrupted local law enforcement, which means our entire government may already be under their control. My god. But they underestimated me, for I am not so easily played. One day I will expose their deeds and put an end to their reign. Having come to a satisfactory conclusion, I take a celebratory bottle of Dr. P, my favorite soda from the fridge. No product placement here, folks, it's Dr. P. You don't know what the P stands for? Could be Dr. Product placement could be Dr. Prada, could be Dr. Pl 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 plural. It's actually very hard to come up with names with P, but it's definitely not Dr. Pepper. I don't like Dr. Pepper, it tastes funny. And if you think otherwise, you're silly. The lab has no air conditioning. Ice cold drinks are essential. Ah, elixir intelli intellectualis. A drink fit for a genius. Cola's b oh, cola's better. I agree, dude. Ocarine really loves his Dr. P. I pity the man who knows not the greatness of this beverage. <laughs> 
If you're like Dr. P, you're on the level of Rintaro, and do you really want to be on his level? I don't think so. Uh, what? Step through the curtain, dividing its center, and you'll enter the heart of the future Gadget Laboratory, the Development Room. Just as the name implies, this is the room where we develop future gadgets. Needless to say, it is strictly off-limits to outsiders. So these people basically just hang out in this apartment and make crazy weird gadgets together. So when you, when you consider that time travel is involved, you can sort of make the link. Yes, I know the setup is cheap. I'd much rather have an airlock than a curtain, but our research burgess is already scraping the bottom of the barrel. Besides, what's important isn't money, it's ambition. I poke Daru and bid him follow me into the development room. Hmm. That looks... messy. All of the windows here are weather-stripped stri with packing tape so it's dim. And hot, almost like a sauna. I've been wanting to buy an air conditioner for the lab, but there's no money for that. We're currently accepting donations. Upon entering the development room, I pick up the lab coat that's lazily draped on the chair and put it on. I always wear a lab coat in the development room. For practical reasons, as well as symbolic ones. Daru, however, refuses to wear his. Putting it on and taking it off is apparently too much trouble for him. He can't be bothered to do anything that doesn't interest him. It's men like him who give our generation a bad name. His lab coat, purchased from my own pocket money, I might add, just sits on the shelf. It's never been worn and probably never will be. Daru, is the plan progressing smoothly? Uh, what plan? Daru gives me a blank look. I sigh and turn his attention to the table in the middle of the room. Sitting majestically on top of the table is a commercial-grade microwave oven. It's significantly larger than the newer home models. Okay, I guess I should read about a microwave oven. Listen up, people who don't know what a microwave oven is. A cooking appliance which heats food by bombarding it with microwaves. Originally called the radar range, the microwave was invented when a radar technician accidentally discovered that electromagnetic waves could warm food. Afterwards, research continued and the consumer appliance version was launched in America in 1947. It emits electromagnetic waves a frequency of 2.45 GHz. This is a special frequency known as the ISM band, which is also used by wireless LAN devices, local area network, consumer grade output is around 500 to 1000 watts, and commercial grade output is around 1000... <coughs> <coughs> I felt the cough coming, I was so close, I just wanted to make it! Around 1500 to 2000 watts. Watts. What? 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 Sorry. Alright. The plan, as in, the plan. Obviously, I'm talking about perfecting gadget number 8. Oh, that. How was I supposed to know what you meant? We've known each other for, what, three years now? We went to high school together, and now we're going to the same university. We share an inseparable bond, like prison cellmates. He's the only he's only been a lab member for two months, though. We were in different classes junior year, and actually we didn't talk at all. So, two years? <laughs> Details. The point is we've known each other a long time. I expect you to keep up with me here. Nope. N-O-P-E. Dots. Awkward silence. Man, all I wanted to do was have one of those cool cryptic conversations where we talk about plans and preparations and other important sounding stuff, but no one knows what it means except us. Shot down again. So are we any closer to figuring out what's wrong with gadget number eight? Not yet. Nice. So far, the Future Gadget Laboratory has completed a total of eight inventions. As I explained to Alpaca Man, <laughs> the lab's primary goal is to develop weapons for the war against the Dark Dominion, led by the organization that rules the world from the shadows. At present, we haven't completed any inventions of that sort. On the contrary, we haven't even figured out what we should make. But along the way, we managed to create some ingenious futurist gadgets as a byproduct of our research. It's a fundamental truth of science that great inventions are often created by accident. In other words, serendip serendipity, I think? The ability to discover something valuable when looking for something else. The microwave oven was born through serendipity. Alright, yeah, makes sense. Allow me to introduce our glorious future gadgets. Gadget number one, the bit particle gun. Okay. The very first future gadget, a toy ray gun with a TV remote jammed inside. You can change channels by pointing it at the TV and pulling the trigger. 
However, the only supported button is channel plus. No other buttons like volume are usable. To turn the TV on, you must manually flip the switch on the TV. Its name is a reference to the classic Japanese robot anime, Mobile Jacket Gunbam. That is the stupidest invention ever. What's wrong with pointing your remote as a gun? Gadget number two, the bamboo helicam. That sounds more reasonable. A CCD camera mounted to a bamboo toy helicopter. The camera is attached to the helicopter's fulcrum, allowing it to record aerial footage unpowered. However, the image is rotating at high speed, so you might get dizzy if you keep looking at it. Name originates from the sci-fi manga 22Mon. So it's basically like a worse, worse, a worse version of the what's it called? Uh, the, the 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 thing you attach to helicopters and stuff that like I can't remember. Moving on, gadget number three. Could this be Aura? Aura? I thought that said Oral there. Could this be Oral? That would be the good name of a porn movie. Uh, a lie detector based on thumb perspiration. Though it might be more appropriate to call it sweat detector, you have to admit it's a pretty clever invention. Its name is a reference to the classic manga, Juju's Bizarre Adventure. Alright. Catch number four, Moad Snake. An instant super humidifier uses electric heating coils to quickly boil a large volume of water. This generates enough steam to fill a room of 12 square meters, though it can only be operated continuously for a few seconds. It looks like a Claymore landmine, which appeals to military otaku. Its name is a reference to the stealth action game Metal Moa Solid Rising. Really? <laughs> God. I guess that most of these references are going to be like just slightly changed. Gadget number five. Once again, I made a worthless object by Goman. Created by combining a dryer and a vacuum, the dryer is operated using the exhaust of the vacuum. Its name is reference to the popular anime Lupin's the Third. Alright, moving on. Gadget number six. The Siloam Saber. A red chemical glow stick with a handle attached, allowing one to grip it like a sword. Made possible not just with future gadget laboratory and hardware, but also with chemical knowledge. Inspired by Spark Wars. A series of epic sci-fi movies. Alrighty, yo. Ghost in the Ball. <laughs> okay. I can see where this comes from. A gadget created by arranging 12 6-inch CRT monitors in a sphere. Small CMOS cameras are installed in the gaps between the monitors, each connected to the monitor on the opposite side of the sphere. This attempt at practical optical camouflage is the greatest masterpiece among the completed future gadgets, but its sheer size makes it difficult to store. Its name is derived from the sci-fi manga Ghost and the Husk, which has an anime adaption. It can all be seen on the website Daru made, so feast your eyes upon the product of a mad scientist's genius. Anyway, our current problem is future gadget number 8, the phone wave. Name subject to change. Name subject to change. Phone wave is a pretty weak name, so I've added name subject to change to the end up until we come up with something better. For the record, it was Mayuri's idea, not mine. When a future gadget is completed, the three of us discuss what to name it. I prefer names based on mythology or names with hidden meanings that need extra explanation to understand. Dara thinks my naming style too ridiculous. He just doesn't have a passion for words like I do. Mayuri can't be bothered to remember difficult names. She says they don't fit in her head. And so, our opinions on gadget names are always split. But I digress. The phone wave, name subject to change, is, in short, a remote-controlled microwave. You put food in the microwave before you leave, then on your way back, call the attached cell phone to start the heating process. Voila, hot food ready for your arrival. Did you go out of your way to make the most useless inventions? This is the sort of stuff you see on... those TV shops or whatever, whatever those programs are called. This is something Billy Mays could be here and talk about. Billy Mays here with another fantastic product! It's called the... A uh, useless microwave. Seriously, just 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 don't get a normal microwave. Okay, bye. And it just flies back to heaven. <sighs> God bless you, Billy Mace. So it's basically a piece of junk. A few days ago, however, we discovered that the phone wave, name subject to change, has a second unintended capability. Our brave, or possibly just ditzy, Mayuri had made it her daily routine to heat some froze, frozen fried chicken by remote control. Do you want to fry some chicken? Long story short, she was defrosting her beloved juicy chicken number one, as usual when the unexpected happened. The chicken came out more frozen than when she put it in. The microwave refroze the chicken. Since then, Daru and I have been searching for the cause. 
We tried copying what Mai Yu Shi did, but we just can't reproduce the freezing phenomenon. And when we try to freeze a banana, it turned out really weird. I just don't get it. Daru, now looking completely fed up with the heat, starts fanning himself with his shirts. I know what it means by really weird. Let's see if we can't make it happen again. Mayuri! Mayuri! Bring forth the bananas! Are you gonna turn him into gel bananas again? That's been bugging me. Uh, that's been bugging me, Mayushi. Can you stop calling them gel bananas? Oh, gel, gel, not gel bananas, gel bananas. Like bananas gel, gel bananas, gel, gel, whatever. But gel bananas are gel bananas. I take the bananas from Mayuri and stick the whole bunch into the phone wave my name subject to change. <laughs> Why do you have to use the whole bunch? It's a waste of food. Your stinginess could cost us the battle with the organization. That's fine with me. Mayushi always buys the bananas, and now Mayushi can't eat a single one. Next time, we'll only do one banana. But I already put the whole bunch in, so I ignore her hungry complaints. A phone wave, name subject to change, is simple to use. It's a microwave with a phone, t phone taped on. The number is already in my address book, I just need to call the phone wave. Now where did I put my phone? I check my pants and coat pockets. Now where did I put my phone? I check my pants and coat pockets. Now where did I put my phone? I check my pants and coat pockets. Move your cursor to the right or press P to bring up your cell phone and call the phone wave. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Now, where did I put... So, when he says something like that, I can just go like, P. Okay, and then... Alright, let's call it. Open address book, phone wave, transmit call. I'm connected. Hello, this is phone wave, name's object to change. This is the voice of Mayushi Guidance, the system Dario programmed to operate the phone wave. Alright, then it should probably be more female-y. Do you hear Mayushi's voice? Sorry, that was not your voice, Mayushi. Be quiet, I'm trying to listen. No. You can operate the timer from this menu. After pushing the hashtag button, please enter the heating time in seconds. I, I don't know the technical term for that button, I just know it as the hashtag button. For example, press hashtag 60 for one minute. For two minutes, press hashtag 20. 120. 420. Entering the command properly will cause the phone wave, name subject to change, to function like a normal microwave. Instead, we're going to deliberately mess up and enter 120. Hashtag. Rebels. All right, here we go. That should do it. This method was originally a simple mistake on Mayuri's part, but he somehow starts the freezing process. The phone wave, name subject to change, comes to life. The turntable begins to rotate. Nice turntable, right? It's even spinning backwards. Backwards? I never noticed that. That might have serious implications. If we look at, at quantum critical behavior driven by Hunt's rule... The rule governing the placement of an atom's electrons. Orbitals of the same energy are each filled with one electron of the same spin before any are filled with a second, also known as Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity. Yeah, no. Not Hunt's rule. No. Okay. The three of us wait and stare at the spinning bananas. How will this turn out? <gasps> After 120 seconds pass, the microwave chimes. Mayuri takes the bananas out. Gel bananas are ready! <laughs> the bananas have become non bananas, not bananas. Gelatinous blobs coated with thin membrane. After Mayuri discovered that phone wave name subject to change at a freezing function, we attempted to freeze a bunch of bananas. This is what happened. It just gets more confusing each time. Well, we're onto something at least. We're onto some great invention here. So I'm curious to see how that'll work out. I'm really hoping like the plot will kick in more, but I guess you have to sort of have their introduction and have everything be set up. It's kind of like Katawa Shoujo early on. It, it was a bit slow, but after a while, once we got into it, it got really interesting. So I'm hoping that this story will also pick up, but 
so far it's been it's been entertaining and hopefully you'll tune into the next episode. Have a still good day, take care and stay awesome. But most importantly everybody, stay dark. Goodbye. <laughs>